Thank you so much, Pam, for that lovely introduction. And I have to say, I'm kind of excited that I have now met the fabulous farm babe in person. So, <laughs> so thanks for that as well. Uh, and I also want to thank the Rank Agribusiness Institute for bringing together what looks to be a really terrific conference today. And uh, thank you for inviting me to come join you and say hello and just share a few words. So it's true that I spent the last 17 years in Los Angeles. And there aren't so many dairy farms in the city of Los Angeles, though more broadly in the state there are some. Um, and more generally, though there is a lot of ag in my old state as well, it's not something that was as directly relevant to me. I came from being the dean of the law school. And so one of the things I wanted to do when I got here was learn. And that is absolutely still a work in progress, but I've uh, learned a lot about the incredible importance of agricultural agriculture to this state and all of the ways that UW-Madison is partnering and contributing to uh, the sustainability of agriculture in this state and to thinking about new innovations uh, to support agriculture and agricultural sustainability in every sense of the word here in UW-Madison. Uh, that's certainly been one of my top priorities about an area to learn about. And as I said, it is a work in progress, but I have made progress and I've also had a lot of fun along the way. I got to tour our Cranberry Research Station near Black River Falls, and I got to wade in my very first ever Cranberry Marsh. And I didn't fall in, which I was a little nervous about, uh, but, but, but I managed not to. Uh, I got to hear about new varieties of apples and cherries and grapes uh, that we're helping to create up at our fruit research station up in Door County. And I also learned about the important uh, role that we can play there as external validators for industry who sometimes get pushback from residents who want things that may not be scientifically reasonable or realistic and how we can partner together to help tell the story of what is and isn't manageable from a sustainability perspective and otherwise, and how that partnership can be more powerful and effective than either group acting separately. I also had a really wonderful tour guide for the dairy industry, and I see sitting right over there, uh, Senator Mark Klein, and uh, I want to thank him um, both for the, the really wonderful tour I had. Uh, uh, he joined uh, Dean, Dean Gillespie and me. We visited Pioneer Farms at UW Platteville last summer, and we also toured Schmidt Dairy Farm in Lone Rock uh, with Randy and Ryan Schmidt. I don't think they're here today, um, but I'll thank them anyway because I, I really appreciated getting a peek behind the scenes of their operation. Um, and that day I got to see, for the first time, I got to see a couple of different milking methods. Uh, and that was really, really very interesting. And I also got to learn more about the Dairy Innovation Hub and what's going on with that. And I know that that would not have been possible without uh, Senator Mark Lund's advocacy and support. So, you know, let's give him a round of applause. In these various early opportunities to explore ag here, and I've gotten to see a ginseng farm, I've gotten to do some other things as well. I, one of the things I've really appreciated is uh, seeing the partnership, the incredible partnerships that can make uh, this state stronger when our university, the other universities in the system, industry, and uh, industry associations and farmers are all working together to try to ask, how can we do better? How can we innovate? How can we support the operations of this state and success? And so I'm very proud of what I've seen. I'm delighted to be here. And I'm also interested in asking how can we do all of those things even more and even better? I think this university, one of the things that really attracted me to UW-Madison was its reputation for being collaborative and interdisciplinary, for thinking across, for not wanting to be stuck in silos, for wanting to break down boundaries, we're wanting to ask big questions, but also practical questions. One part of our DNA is the Wisconsin idea, and that is the notion that we should be doing work that matters outside of the boundaries of our university, work that makes a difference to people's lives, work that partners with people to ask how can we best make a difference to what they're trying to do and to improve their lives. And I think the folks in this room who embody this set of values uh, in a really tremendous way. You've taken this to the next level by building all kinds of partnerships. And so I'd like to just take a minute so that I 
can make sure that what I just said is actually true. I believe it, but I want to. I want you to prove it to me by 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 illustrating just who is in this room. How many of you are faculty and staff uh, from UW Madison? Raise your hand. Okay, excellent. So we've got a big group of you here. How about other system schools? Faculty or staff from other system schools? All right, we've got. Just a couple of you here in that respect. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this conversation. Any students in the room? Okay, they were here before. All right, so there were more. <laughs> You're telling me, I believe you. How about people from agribusiness? Okay, a nice group there. Folks working on issues related to climate change or sustainability. All right, a nice group there as well. Policymakers, community leaders. Terrific. Federal and state agency individuals. Terrific. Any farmers or producers? So that's amazing, right? You're showing right here uh, the value of bringing groups together to talk about areas of shared interest and to go from talk to action, to ask how can we take those shared ideas and interests. We might not always agree on everything, but there's lots where we will agree. And how can we take those pieces and move them forward for the good of this state and to create educational opportunities and research, research opportunities that can be hugely meaningful and transformative. And when, when the groups sitting in this room can really work together, I know we can achieve uh, great things. Um, I also think that's the key to tapping into new funding sources. Uh, and that's the key to making Wisconsin a real model for sustainable agriculture, uh, to create new revenue streams for farmers and producers, and to keep producing nourishing food for all of us. And goodness knows we all want to do that. I will say I've also been having a great time exploring uh, Wisconsin's cheeses. And you'll laugh at this. As I walked into the room, Crystal warned me that there was some kind of label on the bottom of my shoe. And there was. And it was actually from a Wisconsin cheese that we had just opened at home. Uh, and I've been walking around with that label on my shoe all morning. So you can see that I mean it. I'm walking the walk and talking the talk <laughs> with respect to the Wisconsin dairy industry. Um, now, some of you know the university is going to be celebrating a milestone uh, birthday anniversary coming up next year. Anyone know how many years? I heard one answer back there. Good. Say it with confidence. 175. That's right. Uh, 175th uh, anniversary of the founding of UW-Madison. And that gives us, it's going to give us some good opportunities to celebrate, but also to look ahead and to look both backwards and forwards and to ask, what is it that we want to be in the next 25 years, much less 175? Um, and I've really been enjoying getting to hear stories about our past and our state's past and how the university intersects with that. And so I'm going to share a brief story that may be familiar to all of you, but it was, it was new to me. And, um, and I think it's kind of instructive. Before Wisconsin was America's dairy land, uh, anyone know what we were? We were absolutely, we were the Ho-Chunk Nation way before we were America's dairy land. But in between, from an agricultural perspective, wheat, yes, indeed. We were part of America's wheat belt in the late 1800s. But as we all know, growing a single crop year after year on the same land doesn't really tend to work very well. And so production was falling, and the farmers turned to the university for help and said, this isn't sustainable. But many of us have experience with livestock farming, and we think that perhaps that could be sustainable. Will you help? And the university turned to the legislature and uh, luckily found the 1800s equivalent of Senator Mark Vine. And uh, together, they created uh, what we think might have been our very first research grant, $4,000, uh, to figure out how to build better silos. Of course, in another sense, we tear down silos. But in this instance, we, we needed them. Uh, but we also still needed better soil. And that led us to another partner, the businesses running Wisconsin's limestone quarries. And they provided millions of tons of limestone, of brown limestone to our farmers. And the farmers, in an act of really amazing faith, tilled it into the soil and were able to then grow alfalfa to feed their cattle. And so I just love that because it's, it's an early story of partnership, innovation, connection across industry, ag, 
the state and the university. And of course, the, the numbers may be different, the problems may be different, and the scale may be different. But that uh, spirit of partnership together, I think, is what we still very much uh, need and aim toward and often succeed in achieving. Now, as the dairy industry grew, Wisconsin really became a magnet for top faculty from all over the country. We wanted to work in a place that was solving practical problems with cutting edge research and doing research that made a difference. And I'm proud of all of the ways that we are doing that now. And I've been learning about some of them, and I know that I don't yet know about all of them. But certainly, I've been hearing about programs like Grassland 2.0, one of our dairy innovation hub projects, whose goal is to increase farmer profitability while also improving water quality, soil health, and climate change resilience. Our master cheesemaker program at CDR, and that was near and dear to my heart since I am determined to try pretty much every cheese this state has to offer, uh, and that's helped to drive Wisconsin's national leadership in cheesemaking, and I know you'll be hearing from one of those cheesemakers shortly. And another area with real potential for growth, uh, engineering microbes to digest dairy residues into green chemicals, a potential win-win-win that could give us potentially new biofuels and open up a new market for farmers and producers while also reducing the waste stream. So I just think all of these are areas with tremendous potential that leverages the university's long and strong history of excellence in agricultural research, but also the power of our culture of collaboration, our culture of wanting to work with industry to solve real problems that farmers and agribusiness are facing, and the goal of trying to innovate together. I'm really excited to see what comes next as our Dairy Innovation Hub continues to expand its work. I also really love that it's a partnership across three of our campuses, and that's also going very well and creating new opportunities for collaboration that are even outside of its boundaries as defined, and I think that's really a, a terrific thing as well. And so I want to thank all of you for your partnership and for your work making our, our agricultural industry stronger and more resilient, and we're going to need all of us roaming in the same direction in order to achieve that. Now, I'm going to conclude with an ask of you. As you all know, and some of you know better than others, the state budget process begins next month and runs through this summer. And as you probably know, state, tax, state dollars about uh, right now to about 15% of our total revenues, which is obviously a much smaller amount than it was a generation ago. But it's also a really important uh, source of value and contribution to what we're doing at this university. And we couldn't uh, do what we're doing without it, especially with, a, with the resident tuition freeze that's been in place for the last decade. Now, I'll be out there talking to folks, but they hear from us a lot. And I would love it if you also shared your views about how you know firsthand the ways that the university is making a difference in helping Wisconsin agriculture to thrive and the ways that the university makes a difference well beyond the boundaries of Dane County. So I hope that you will be willing to also serve as our advocates and to tell the story of how we help support partnerships, innovation, and we make a huge difference as an economic driver of this state. Um, they say that every dollar invested in the university returns $26.73. Now that's an amazing ROI. It's also, if we're honest about it, kind of weirdly precise, 2673. I'm not sure I can justify exactly that number, but whatever the number is, whether it's 26, 25, 24, there's simply no question that every dollar invested in this university gives back with a great multiple of that which is provided and makes an enormous difference to the strength of this state to the development of workforce, to innovation in all kinds of ways, and to the partnerships that bring all of you into this room today. And so I do hope that you will help us tell that story and share that story so that we can continue to partner effectively and thrive for, yes, our next 25 years, and then hopefully even for our next 175. Thanks for this opportunity to talk to you. Thanks for the opportunity to see some of you I'd met before and to meet some of you for the first time. And I look forward very much to working with you in the years ahead. And, of course, on Wisconsin. <laughs>